Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. It is Monday, August the 24th, and this is our Monday weekly update, coronavirus update, and we'll also add some other issues uh, to the mix. Uh, we have not had a chance to brief you for the last two weeks. Two weeks ago today was the last time I was have a chance to be before you. We'll continue these on Monday, and then depending on uh, circumstances, we'll do them more frequently as may be necessary. Uh, we begin as we started the reason for this with our, the progress of our response to the COVID-19 outbreak. We are now at the uh, coming to the end of our sixth month dealing with COVID virus from the original outbreak in March and the concerns that we had in February. Our numbers uh, continue to show a certain amount of uh, improvement and a certain amount of stabilization from what we've had in the past. Currently, we have 477 active cases of COVID based on uh, the numbers from today. Interestingly enough, a month ago, we had almost about the same number, 474 active cases. But what's particularly interesting is that we have tested a significant number of additional people, 130,000 more people over the course of the last month. Our, our total number tested at this moment is 497,417. A month ago today, we had tested 363,696. So over the course of a month, we're 130,000 people were tested, and we had uh, an increase of uh, something to the tune of about uh, an additional 1,000 positive tests. There have been functionally no increases in the number of active cases, and that is a good sign. Our hospitalization rate now hovers in the low 30s. We'd had numbers that oscillated in the 40s, but over the last week or so, we've gone under the 40 number, so somewhere in the vicinity of 32. Uh, sometimes the number rises, sometimes it's lowered, depending on the status of individuals. Uh, a month ago, we had 51 people hospitalized. Two months ago, on June 24th, we had 81 people hospitalized. And if you go back to April, which would be in the peak period, April 24th, we had 953 people hospitalized for COVID. So going back four months from 953 to where we are today, somewhere in the vicinity of 30 to 35 people, that is a sign of progress. The total number of testing, again, 497 right now, puts us just below the 500,000 tested mark. And while you have to assume there were some second and third testings for individuals, that puts us very close to 50% of the population of Westchester County has been tested for COVID. Now, a negative test taken weeks ago uh, might not represent your current status. It's possible you could have been exposed to the disease after a negative test. If you have tested positive and you've gone through the two-week incubation period, you are seen as having beaten the disease and not likely to be reinfected. And we have yet to hear a report of a case of reinfection of someone who has come down sick after having passed that two-week period of time because of COVID. We have suffered 1,449 fatalities year to date through COVID. Again, that's a very high number, but just to put it in perspective, one month ago, we had 1,443. So over the course of the last month, we have lost uh, six people to COVID. Uh, we lost one in the last week, and we've lost uh, just four since the 1st of April, uh, since 1st of August. You go back a little bit further to July 24th, you lost six individuals over the course of the month. Again, comparisons. A month ago today, we had 1,443 fatalities, and we had lost seven in the prior week. This month, one in the prior week. If you go back to April 24th, we had uh, a total number of 891 fatalities, so it's a much lower number of fatalities. But over the course of the week leading up to April 24th, we lost 300 people in a week. And that was in the, as we were going through the peak of infection and the peak of fatalities. So we are certainly flattening out the number of fatalities near zero, many nights of zero now that's encouraging. Our hospitalization rate is getting very low. Our number of testing is increasing. And the number of active cases are staying stable. And if we have a high number of active cases, but people work through the two-week period and they're not ill and they don't get hospitalized and they don't suffer a fatality, then you know, we can feel as if we're making progress and uh, managing uh, the results of this as, as well as we can. Contact tracing is fully underway. Uh, with every individual who tests positive, we have a team of people making contact tracing. They are talking to the individuals. They're identifying those folks that they've come in contact with over the last 10 days, two weeks, and then trying to identify whether those people uh, are suffering from COVID. And we feel that's been going uh, reasonably well. We're now just within two weeks of the end of the vacation season. We had great concern over people that would be leaving this area to travel elsewhere and come back. And for those who might be traveling into this area and uh, 
uh, may, hap, uh, uh, may happen to increase the amount of infection because they, they are in a part of the country that has a greater amount of infection. We have not seen spikes that represent that fear uh, realized. Uh, we're not yet through the vacation seri- uh, period. In fact, the next two weeks are probably the, the period of peak vacation uh, time frame up to and including Labor Day weekend, which is what two weeks from today would represent Labor Day. But uh, we know that the next big mountain to climb now that we've gotten through We hope the vacation season will be the back-to-school issues at hand. We are speaking on a regular basis with the local school districts. Many of them now are making the decision not to bring students in in person in the month of September and holding off with remote learning for September and then having, as of October, some time in-classroom teaching. But it's a very difficult area. We, We went through the period of figuring out how do we open up a beach, how do we open up a pool, and there was lots of debate, but opening up the school systems is a much more complicated process. Each school superintendent, school boards, and uh, presidents of school boards, principals, uh, administrators, teachers are all responsible for that in each of the 44 districts in Westchester County. And uh, the educational component, they report directly to the state, to the state education department. The county has developed a working group to work with the schools on matters of health and sanitization. So to the extent that there are protocols along those lines, we have a working team. Joe Glazer, who is our uh, uh, deputy commissioner of the mental health department, has been serving as a liaison through the health department with a group of other individuals to work through issues of testing, uh, contact tracing, and then other issues that relate to the opening of schools. But the decisions um, uh, belong to each of the different school districts, and the county stands by ready to help them as that happens. Governor recently came out with an announcement regarding opening gyms and health clubs. Today is the first day that gyms and health clubs can be open. They have been shut down since March when everything in the society shut down. So even though restaurants started to come back in June and we saw offices and retail open up, the gyms and health clubs have been closed throughout this whole period of time of any size and scope. The governor has laid out a plan by which it is the county health department that gives the final sign-off for the opening of the uh, gyms and the health clubs. They open today and they have to be inspected within the next two week period. That inspection process and the sign off that comes from the county health department comes through a partnership that we are working with the local building departments. So the building departments are in a better position to evaluate the uh, uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning uh, components of of a unit also uh, building capacities. So as the building inspectors work with the county health department inspectors, and we also have a team that involves our consumer protection office under the leadership of Jim Masano and uh, various parks department officials as well. Together, that team inspects all the different gyms and health clubs, gives them a green light, uh, and they can continue to open. If there's a problem, then they'd have to reclose. Hopefully we won't see a problem like that. But uh, that is what's underway as we speak today in opening yet another element of our society slowly and carefully as we try to make sure that the COVID-19 virus does not spread. And so far, if you go back over the period of time from when the peak ended sometime about the end of April, we start to see numbers declining. Uh, We've had a good track record of opening things up slowly and methodically and not having it spike our COVID-19 results. Of course, gyms and health clubs today, uh, in a couple of weeks' time, uh, schools, or uh, perhaps not until October, but whenever the schools come back online, that will be a major test for our system. Um, I think when the governor gives his reports on New York State, they're very consistent uh, with the things that we've said here in Westchester County. I think this area, the New York metropolitan area, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut suffered a terrible blow before any other part of the country did, and now we're benefiting from the restrictions that we put into place, mask wearing as being a relatively universal uh, situation, social distancing, hand sanitization when uh, we can't wash our hands, and to do the things that we have to do to protect ourselves from the spread of the virus, and, and we're fortunate. But, as I say every time I speak at this microphone, there is no vaccine, there is no antiviral um, treatment that's been uh, agreed upon by the medical science community. Um, there are many offered treatments that have been out there, but none that have received universal support across the board. We all want a quick cure, but often a quick cure is a quack cure. And uh, I I caution you as I caution myself, as much as we want to hear the good news, let us wait until it's confirmed by medical science and across the board agreement, not just a couple of practitioners here or there, but something that's a a profession-wide assessment that uh, successfully says that they now have a vaccine 
or they now have a, uh, an antiviral treatment to treat COVID. Until that happens, we have to practice behaviors that we're less comfortable with, wearing masks in the hot summer season, social distancing, and uh, constant hand washing and hand sanitizing as being three basic methods. But our COVID numbers uh, have been good, and uh, we hope that they'll continue to be good. Every day we track them, every day we hope for no fatalities, every day we hope for a diminishment of the number of people hospitalized, and a smaller number of positive cases. And we'll continue to hope that day after day and we'll report to you at least weekly so you know where we stand. As an outgrowth of uh, the COVID uh, crisis, we had a shutdown in our society, almost a full shutdown in the month of March. We've talked about it being reopened in phases. A lot of businesses have suffered greatly. Many businesses have gone under. Many individuals have gone under financially. And small businesses, big industries, airline hotel industries, big time affected by this. Westchester County established, and it began this morning, an industrial development agency loan and grant application program. That program went live this morning at 9 a.m. The county's IDA has this program to try to help the short-term viability of small businesses and not-for-profit corporations that have been affected by COVID-19. The program allows the IDA to provide financial assistance through the state state disaster and emergency loan and grant program. And uh, the small amounts of uh, grants cap out at $10,000. These proceeds have to be used for the purpose of acquiring PPE, personal protective equipment, or installing equipment necessary to, to prevent the spread. And there's also a loan program of an amount up to $25,000, and that is available at 0% interest. And while there are small numbers, they're targeted. They're targeted to help organizations qualify uh, in a way that will make them safe to open and operate under the regulations uh, designed to open businesses to prevent the COVID-19 outbreak. That program is open today. I, have a, I suspect that uh, applications have come in the door almost immediately, and I'm sure we'll reach a maximum capacity of applications uh, pretty soon. But this is an example of us as a county government trying to do something to help our small businesses and help them remain viable during this COVID outbreak. So those are some of the key elements in terms of our COVID crisis. We have a number of other issues on the table that I'll just mention very briefly. Uh, we have our Police Reform and Reinvention Task Force. In the last two weeks, uh, that group, which is uh, chaired by Mayo Bartlett and Leo, Leroy Frazier, have held two public um, sessions for public comment uh, of, on video through Zoom and WebEx, and uh, that was held on uh, a week ago Thursday and then this past Tuesday. And then we also had live testimony accepted at five locations in Yonkers and Mount Kisco, New Rochelle, White Plains, and in Peekskill. That was last Tuesday. Uh, in the beginning of the process to get public input on developing a plan that would help us talk about the changes and the reforms that we would look at for our law enforcement efforts uh, that would help deal with the issue of racial injustice that has uh, come to a societal uh, uh, peak after the death of George Floyd. So that death now is almost three months ago, uh, but we're, we're trying to respond in an intelligent way. This task force is a large group of people. They include individuals uh, who represent uh, the, um, the law enforcement community, people who represent the activist community, folks uh, who are um, in the clergy and other activists and other community-minded people, and they will be having discussions and trying to come up with some very concrete plans that we can implement at the county government. Uh, the governor has uh, required all governments that have um, local law enforcement arms to go through a process like this, include public input. We're doing it. We announced actually we were going to do it prior to the state mandate, but the state mandate now ties in funding for law enforcement to this process. So villages and towns and cities will be going through the same process as well. And hopefully what will come out of this will be a concrete set of improvements that we can implement and, uh, and properly address the concerns. We know there have been a lot of um, rallies here in Westchester County. Uh, however, they've all been peaceful. There have been none that have uh, become uh, violent in any way, shape, or form. There's been no looting or no rioting in any of our major cities or our villages or towns. And we're very proud of that, that Westchester residents have responded properly. Uh, there's a call for reform, and now we're trying to answer that call for reform in an intelligent and an appropriate way. Uh, three weeks ago, uh, we, we suffered through a hurricane, and it's hard to believe it's just three weeks ago. It's three weeks ago. Uh, tomorrow it will be. And uh, Hurricane uh, Isaias came through and uh, really paid us a very short visit and caused maximum damage in that short visit. 
Uh, two weekends ago, we were still suffering with people without power and without utility connections, without data and telephone connections. The impact of the hurricane, which came through on uh, Tuesday, August 4th, was felt for a solid week in many homes and sometimes after longer than a week. And it really laid bare some of the problems that we have in our various utilities in providing services when under stress. We, we understand that we uh, uh, come to expect the free and easy access to power, the free and easy access to communications and data. Um, when uh, a major incident happens, I think common sense tells us that it's not possible to always maintain that connectivity. But once you get past two and three days, and you get into five days and six days and a week and nine days, it becomes very difficult. Not only are we dealing in a warm period of time where uh, we use our electricity to uh, cool us in one way, shape, or form or another, but because of COVID, we find ourselves working out of our homes uh, on an ongoing basis. And when connectivity shuts down, our ability to function in our careers shuts down. We're not going into an office uh, for those who have that type of employment and uh, we're not able to work out of our homes. And, and uh, nerves are frayed as it is already. We're dealing with a shutdown of a society like we've never seen before. And we add to it the concerns of racial and social justice. We add to it the concerns of economic uh, need. And now we add to it an issue of loss of power. Over the course of uh, the period of time since power was turned on most everywhere, we've had a series of meetings and discussions about this. I've made a couple of statements about it, uh, castigating where I thought was appropriate. Uh, the state legislature had a joint uh, meeting this past uh, Thursday in which they invited testimony from regulators, electric utilities, telecommunication companies, municipal officials, and many hours of questioning. It was really a marathon session for assembly members and senators. Uh, it was chaired uh, in part by Assemblywoman Amy Paulin from Westchester County, who chairs the relevant committee on corporations and authorities. Uh, and we had many of our colleagues in the state legislature present for that. Con Edison, Nisig, Altice, Verizon, and all of those utilities were there to be held accountable. Uh, the governor and the PSC have taken some statements. I'll let them, uh, you know, be the ones to uh, highlight the specifics of what they've done. But the need for remedial activities on insufficient crews and personnel for cutting and clearing and restoration purposes, improved call center and command center operations, a better coordination plans with the municipality and counties, and all of these things uh, to be put through in the next uh, 20, 30 days. All of these are necessary actions. The anger uh, two weekends ago was palpable. I drove in and out of many neighborhoods, not all of them, but many neighborhoods, and I saw the frustration. I saw it expressed to me in emails, telephone calls, and Facebook posts, and it was significant it became uh, yet another major issue that we've had to deal with in real time without the ability to order the utilities and what to do. But that issue is not uh, being forgotten now that the power is turned back on or that the uh, cable TV services are back on. This is an issue we're going to continue to work. We had a group called United Westchester that united all of the different local officials uh, as well as county government. Assemblyman David Buckwald was a moving force behind that. Recommendations came from that effort. Very. Uh, uh, very important recommendations. We're going back over them to see uh, how well uh, they fared. And uh, what I've said on any number of times is I think uh, much of this is very simple. Uh, we can't always prevent the next uh, hurricane from taking out power lines. Uh, there's certain things we can do. We'll talk about and price out what burying those lines look like. But there's no question that um, uh, we're not prepared with sufficient manpower to restore power as soon as the power is out. And I think that is a, a, a serious deficiency in the system. We're not staffed up to be able to do within a certain number of days. We rely on municipal assistance that doesn't come from two towns over. It comes from four or five states away and, and cannot be brought to bear soon enough to help reestablish power. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us to do before the next hurricane comes. And as you can see by watching uh, the news every night, there's two and three and four hurricanes uh, out there in the Atlantic now, a couple in the Gulf of Mexico. So we are by no means out of the hurricane season we hope that none of them visit, give us another visit on top of this one, but we have to be prepared for whatever is coming. But the outage issue is a major issue for us as well. Um, beyond uh, those particular issues relating to the storm, um, we continue to operate our uh, recreation system as well as we can. We had to close uh, the Playland Amusement Park, but over the course of this weekend where it was very warm, we had good attendance at our two beaches on Playland and Croton Point Park and our four public swimming pools at Sprain Ridge, pardon me, Sprain Brook, Tibbetts Brook, Wilson Woods, 
and uh, Saxon Woods as well. And in each of those places in this hot weather, we're trying to provide some recreational relief for the people who live in Westchester County. Uh, and that is also an important part of our situation. So with that, I'm going to um, uh, complete my presentation, take any questions that we have. There are any number of issues that come up. Uh, just for those of you who may be watching, uh, every Monday after I give this update at 3.30, uh, we engage a municipal call with the local village, town, and city leaders that participate or their designees, and we cover this and a host of other issues as well. So we're trying to keep up that dialogue between uh, the citizenry and between the other elected officials uh, and to try to deal with all these issues in a cooperative way, not in a partisan way. There's certainly plenty of partisanship out there, and we certainly have our uh, personal beliefs and our political affiliations, but we're trying to solve the people's w business, deal with those businesses as cooperatively as we can and as open and as transparently as we can. So, okay. Catherine, we have a remote question or two? Yes. Uh, the first question comes from Joe Torres from ABC7. He would like uh, for you to address the concert protest held Saturday night in Osning. Uh, police feel that they were put in a very difficult situation. Can you comment on it? Well, you know, we, we know what the rules are uh, as have been established. The governor has made it illegal to have uh, any outdoor event with more than 50 people. Uh, this event uh, applied for permits to be able to have a concert. I think they've had this in past years, and um, they were not given that authority by the, by the village of Ossining nor the town of Ossining. They held it anyway. Uh, they, they went ahead to be present. Uh, they put the police in a very difficult situation. Um, with as many uh, party goers as existed, uh, the police had to try to, uh, they certainly informed the, uh, uh, the people who were organizers, uh, to cease and desist, they chose not to, and uh, it became the potential for quite a bit of a, of a conflict had the police gone in with the more aggressive police tactics. We, we know that it is going to be very difficult for us to, and particularly in this climate of issues of police reform, um, manage people who choose not to follow the rules. You know, we, we express a need for people to wear masks for a reason. We express the need for people social distance for a reason. And in this particular case, we have a group of individuals who are unwilling to uh, follow the rules that happened at this stage of the game. What sanctions we take now after the event is over is yet to be determined. What legal sanctions, what uh, sanctions prohibit these individuals from being in our facilities in the future, all of that is yet to play out. But uh, we don't have enough police, we don't have enough manpower to enforce common sense. And in, the, in not just the million people of, New, of uh, Westchester County, but my understanding is the bulk of the attendees for this event came up out of New York City. And uh, we're not local county residents. It's a beautiful venue on the Hudson River. It's a lovely night for concert. It's just not legal. And uh, we're going to do everything we can within reason to enforce the laws of the state. But we have to be practical. And, and we don't want to put a force of a couple of dozen police officers in a crowd of multiple hundred people and try to get them to uh, organize uh, and shut something down. That winds up being a great difficulty. We'll, we'll have our ways of handling this as we go forward. Uh, we've had a peaceful experience here in Westchester County. As I said a second ago, no looting, no rioting. We want to preserve that. But at the same time, um, we need to make sure that uh, the people who organize these things pay some penalty. And it may be an after-the-fact penalty. It may be financial. Um, it could be criminal. We'll let the courts determine how best to go forward with those individuals that organized this and willfully did not follow the law. Okay. The next question comes from David Proper from the Journal News. Has the average age group of in, uh, those infected with COVID gone down over the last couple of months? A uh, good question, and I'm going to want to check the statistics to comment more thoroughly on it. <clears throat> We've checked primarily the demographics on fatalities as being the, the cutting edge issue. And that's where we have seen the greatest number of people who have died being uh, older. And of course, with the reduction in the number of infections, uh, we see a reduction in the number of hospitalizations, the number of fatalities. Um, we'll take a look and we'll try to get back some specific numbers. My, my general sense is, is that we're testing more people and we're finding a small percentage of those that are positive. We might be seeing a slight uptick in the number of people being younger. But um, I'm not sure that statistically it means enough for us to determine that, oh, what we're experiencing now is a wave of young people getting COVID as opposed to people in other demographics. We'll try to find out those numbers for you as we can. That was the last question. Okay. Very good. Well, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, as I said, we'll be uh, back again next Monday, give you a brief update again on these numbers and statistics. If we have anything important to report, we'll come back before you again during the course of the week. Uh, we hope everybody stays safe, enjoys this uh, 
dog days of summer, I guess they call it. It's plenty of humid, as you can tell uh, by uh, uh, you know, the climate here uh, where we're taping. But uh, we hope that we'll have an opportunity to all stay safe, enter the fall, get some good news from medical science some point in time soon. And uh, we hope that we'll have a, a good fall ahead. But in the meantime, stay safe. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Thanks for tuning in.